and welcome to the first in a mini-series all about paper mosaics. But first off, what actually is paper mosaics? Well, that's perhaps the easiest part, and it is quite literally mosaics that have been made using paper, or more usually cardstock, rather than your standard glass or terracotta tiles. What you're creating is, in essence, much the same. You are decorating a surface with small pieces, usually referred to as tiles, in order to create one whole image. But the end result is more likely to be a card or a picture rather than a coaster, for example, when using cardstock. And the two obvious major advantages of paper mosaics over traditional is that it is very much cheaper to get started, and what you create tends to be much easier to display. And you can either stick with paper mosaics from that point on, or you can see it like a stepping stone before you try traditional mosaics, as the process is generally the same and the activities that go around it. Personally, I love both crafts, and I practice both of them, but to create different artworks, obviously. Enough waffle though, let's have a look at what you actually need to get started. And first and foremost, of course, it goes without saying that you need to get hold of some good cardstock from which you can create your tiles. Try to only use card that is at least 200 GSM, that's grams per square meter, for your tiles, as I tend to find anything thinner than this is prone to curling at the corners or deforming if you accidentally use even slightly too much glue. This will flatten out again once it dries, but it makes the process of placing the next tile very much more difficult than it needed to be if you had had a straight edge from which to work. And also, by having a slightly thicker card, it gives the finished piece some depth, adding the illusion that there's grout there that you would usually have had if you were creating more traditional mosaics. Basically, having thicker cardstock adds just a little bit of 3D to your work. But finding thick cardstock isn't usually too difficult. Where you might have a problem, though, is finding the right colours. And this is obviously highly subjective, depending very much on the style of mosaic you are creating. But in general, it's best to avoid shops that cater for stationary supplies, as they tend to only have a very limited range of fairly neon, primary or generic pastel colours. And instead, look more towards the packs supplied for scrapbooking. These do tend to be square in shape, and they come in either a 6 inch square or a 12 inch square, and you can get some really beautiful packs of colours that have all been chosen to be complementary to each other. Textured card can also add a very different definition to your artwork, and a faint texture such as this canvas texture is highly suitable for making mosaics. If the texture is very, very faint though, then I tend to find it doesn't show up particularly well through glass if you're using it to create a picture, for example. And also, highly textured card can be so distracting that you stop seeing the picture and you're just looking at individual card pieces. The same goes for metallic or highly glossed card stock as well. I tend to find that these are very difficult to use effectively unless you're creating really quite an abstract piece. So to begin with at least, best to stick with nice matte texture on your card. And the same applies as well when selecting card stock for a background. Although in this case you don't need such a thick cardstock, and I find I can get away with anything that's above 160 GSM, even so, when using 160 though, you may find that the card does deform slightly when the glue is wet, especially if you've been working in one area for a while. But once it dries, it will return to being flat, and it's only anything less than 160 GSM that I find to be just too flimsy and prone to ripping while the glue is wet, or it becomes so deformed it's just completely unworkable. Your choice of background colours is again rather subjective, and it is dependent on the type of piece you're creating, but neutral colours are very much easier to work with and tend to be more closely resembling of grout. Greys, yellows and browns all work wonderfully well. And in all honesty, Good old plain white 160 GSM card is readily available and probably the cheapest of the lot, so it is perfect if you are learning your new craft. I have tried textured card for backgrounds, but unless your gaps between the tiles are very large indeed, then you tend to just lose the effect, and so normal smooth matte card works just fine. It also goes without saying that you're going to need something to cut your card up with. And, as I'm not going to toy with your intelligence too much, scissors are a must, obviously. Preferably ones that have a good grip, and can make very small, very thin cuts without bending the card. 
Personally, I am a big fan of the X-Cut scissor reins, as they tend to do just that. They are very sharp, they are very clean, and they are very neat to use. This pair wasn't cheap, it cost about £8 10 years ago, although I have noticed on Amazon they seem to have come down in price recently. But still, this pair has lasted all this time, and it still only looks a little bit worn around the edges, and it cuts just perfectly. A paper cutter, or guillotine, is another invaluable tool for creating lots of tiles that are the same thickness, or for creating strips where you don't want to spend an absolute age carefully cutting them out. This doesn't need to be anything fancy, or able to handle multiple sheets even, unless you're going to be creating an absolutely huge mosaic. They just need to be sharp, and have an inbuilt ruler to make measuring that little bit easier. But scissors are quite an easy subject. Gluing, on the other hand, is a little bit more challenging. There are different glues available, and all have their pros and cons, but they can be broken down into three rough types. That's either going to be sticks, tapes, or liquids. Glue tapes, otherwise known as double-sided tape, has the benefit of being clean and it's easy to cut down to size, and for very large pieces that you're using on your mosaic, they are very quick to apply. There's also absolutely no leakage around the sides of the tiles, which can be a bit unsightly, especially if it builds up. But tape can be difficult to cut down to very, very small sizes without it becoming overly fiddly, and it can also cause the tape itself to split. And then you get glue all over your scissors, which you then have to spend time cleaning off. Also, some brands of glue tape can discolour very quickly, and you need to be careful that none of the tape that you've used is showing around the edges of your tiles once they're in place. And this can be challenging, especially if you're using, as I say, very tiny pieces. I also tend to find that glue tapes fall into one of two categories. They are either extremely strong sticking, so that once they're in place, you have no option at all to tweak the location of that tile, and so, if you've slightly misplaced it, well, tough luck. That's where it lives now, unless you want to risk tearing the background. Or, it's a low-tack variety of tape, in which case your tiles risk popping off if you bend the background card even slightly. And so, to me, glue tapes have their place, but I tend to only use them for very large individual tiles that might be prone to warping if I used a lot of liquid glue on the back of them. Glue sticks are another option, but I'll be honest here, I have very little experience with them, because personally I have never found a brand of glue stick that is strong enough to hold the tiles in place, especially small ones. And this is mostly because this type of glue tends to dry very brittle, and any deformity of the background card will crack the glue, and then all of your tiles simply pop off. And so, I don't use glue sticks at all, I really couldn't recommend them. And the third option, of course, is liquid glues. PVA is cheap, readily available, and has the major benefit of not drying too quickly, so that once you've placed down your tiles, you usually have about 10 minutes or so where you can make changes to their location. Once dry, it's also flexible, so it's not prone to popping the tiles off if the card is bent, and it dries clear and without discoloration. The major downside to PVA is that it's messy. It is very difficult to keep it completely contained underneath the tiles, and so you're always going to get some leakage around the sides. These visible bits will then dry shiny, and that's going to stand out against your nice matte-coloured card, so you need to be extra careful not to get any glue at all on the tops of your tiles, and also as little as possible around the edges, because it will ruin the appearance of your piece for having all these little shiny blobs everywhere. Personally, I tend to use fabric PVA, just the same as I do for my traditional mosaics. This is just a very slightly thicker version of PVA. It is less prone to leaking, a bit messy sometimes, and I certainly can't completely stop the glue from oozing out around the sides, but for the most part, to me at least, it is the best of both worlds. It takes long enough to dry that I have time to adjust the location of tiles, and it's not so messy that it bothers me. And on the liquid glue front, of course, you do have the option of superglue. Although I would class this as absolute overkill, you really don't need anything like that. And the other problem with superglue, of course, is that it dries within seconds. As soon as you basically touch two pieces of paper together, it has glued completely solidly. So stay away from superglue, it's really not very useful in this instance. And I suppose the last thing you need to think about when getting started with paper mosaics is a simple little project, 
which may sound like a cop-out, but believe me when I say it is so easy when you first start a new hobby to get really carried away and over-enthusiastic about what you want to create. And that, almost invariably, ends in disappointment. Mosaics are wonderful, and the process is almost meditative in its repetition. But it does require patience and practice, and it is surprisingly time-consuming. So, start small. And if you really want to save money, start with something that doesn't use too many colours as well. Even a simple circle on a background makes a perfectly good starter project. All you need is something circular to draw around, be that a mug or even the base of a pencil sharpener, and then something on which you can mosaic, so a piece of card. And then once you get a feel for the basics, then you can either move on to more expansive or complicated projects that's either got a lot of curves in it, which tends to be the most likely place where you're going to go wrong when you first start, or have lots of colours involved where you're going to want to be combining them, and that's going to get a little bit more pricey. Start small, though, and just enjoy the process first. And then expand from there. And above all, though, just have fun getting to know your new hobby before you splurge out £500 on every piece of card you can possibly find. Anywho, though, I hope you've enjoyed this little video all about getting started with paper mosaics. Happy crafting, everyone, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye!